Yo, what's up, everybody? It's, it's me, Skid. Back to start playing Tyranny. Uh, this is, uh, I've been pretty excited about this game. I heard about it a few months ago. It's a collaboration between two of my favorite game developers, Obsidian. Uh, it's part of the team that uh, made uh, the Baldur's Gate games and uh, Pillars of Eternity. And Paradox, a Swedish publisher who makes some of the most awesome in-depth crazy games that I've ever played, like uh, Crusader Kings 2, all that stuff. Hey, Swarly515, Bill, A. Frango's bringing the beers. Uber Branches, Little Red Riding Cup, welcome. All right, so uh, I'm not gonna be able to, I'm only gonna play for about an hour today, because I got a late start, uh, but I'm gonna get try to get through some character creation. All right, new game settings. The normal difficulty requires strategy and efficiency, but forgives a few mistakes in combat. Yeah, that's I'm. I'll be terrible. So yeah, I'm Man Face. Welcome. Ooh, I like the art style. So I guess I'll get into the. But the premise is that the evil tyrant has been victorious and rules the day. So here we go. I'm sure this will explain everything. For over 400 years. The armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the disfavored so far. Watching over the two generals is Tunon, the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Tunan brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands, aided by the fate binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of fate binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. I was. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? <laughs> cool. Well, uh, yeah, I definitely. Just from that little bit of intro, I'm definitely liking the disfavored. Um, all right, so let's start from the beginning. I, I read a little bit about some tips about uh, character creation, but nothing that seemed super helpful. Uh, Commander Spudley, welcome. G. Spearin, welcome. I'm Manface, welcome. Hello. Uh, I usually play dudes, so I'll play a dude. Uh, I think I'm just going to play... Some melee fighter type, not not a big chunky guy, but like like that is good. Uh, wow, ooh, just like cut, split the difference on the skin tone. Roll in the Northern Empire where you were born. Men enjoy equal protections under the laws of the Overlord Kairos. In the southern lands of the Tears, only men may own or captain ships, but real estate is restricted to women. Interesting. Men may lease, but durable ownership of the land in the tears always passes to eldest daughters or sister. Most sons enter their father's profession by their mid-teens. Those without a profession or family lands to work can find purpose by pledging service to one of the Overlord's mighty Archons. Criminals, derelicts, and others are often conscripted into the armies of the Archons. If a child cannot forge his own skin, we will certainly find one in battle. Matthew. Hey, Matthew. What's a class I haven't played? 
Uh, I, you know, I've never really played a wizard. I'll try that. But for this, I'm gonna do a um, melee fighter. I think. Oh, portrait! This is always fun. Uh, let's see. I can do different faces. Ugh, that looks dumb. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that one. Hair. Oh, cool. Bald. Is there more? Oh, there's more. There's a lot more. Oh, that's kind of cool. Looks like Bruce Campbell. Ah, I kind of like that. A little bit of a slick back look. Ah, uh, ponytail. No ponytails for me, thank you. Tight. Yeah, soundtrack is cool. What is this? Uh, I like that. I think I'm into that. It's like that. Hair color. I get a dirty blonde like me in real life. I'll do that. Uh, facial hair. I would love to have kind of a. No. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, I'll just go without. Let's go clean shaven. Uh, and voice. Let's see. On the lookout. Sneaky male. We must rest soon. Male aggressive. Curious. I think I like that one. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with male aggressive. Cool. All right, and now the portrait. Well, I got it. That looks that looks like me. Um, these are all ladies. Uh, that's pretty close. Play the lady voice. <laughs> okay, let's see. Ha! Good work. <laughs> This will be fun. <laughs> Moving cautiously. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll wounds are slowing me down. I need rest. All right. Uh, oh, tattoos. Yes. Oh, cool. Oh, that's neat. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. Man, should I go full Mike Tyson? Oh, this is neat. Like the tribal stuff. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, I'll do red and black. Yeah, I will do that. Is there more? Can I do more than one? I'll just do that. Um... Thanks. Yeah, sweet tats, bro. <laughs> That's a pretty cool dude, man. So far. You know what? I think I want a beard, though. Yeah, I'm going to go beard. Okay, now this is important. How did I join Kairos' army? Origin. Mm -hmm. Today you are a fate binder. Uh, sorry, just got a text from Troy. Today you are a fate binder, agent of the Archon of Justice. You are by no means free, but as a warrior scholar deputized with discretionary powers to interpret and execute the laws of the Overlord Kairos, you are freer than most. One does not apply to be a fate binder. One is called by Tunon, the Archon of Justice, and to decline is death. Millions of men and women live in the dozens of realms ruled by the Overlord. How did you stand out from amongst his teeming mass of desperation and insignificance to gain the Archon's notice? Hey, Silver 77s. So what do you guys think? Um, I was thinking Pit Fighter. Lawbreaker. Oh, law yeah, Lawbreaker might be good too. 
Um, it's Calabras. Well, I could do Nesta. I could have it be Nesta. Um, I think I think I'm gonna go. I think I want to go Pit Fighter. Scion. What is Scion? Noble Scion. Oh, that's yeah. Born to noble parents. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just, I like Pit Fighter. Not wishing to play to feed and house, too. The madam that purchased your mother sold you to the Proving Grounds, the Northern Empire's bloodiest, most notorious fighting arena. Given only enough training to assure the show isn't over too soon, your natural prowess and survival instinct led you to one victory after another. There was no elegant sword play, or formalised jewels. It was brutal melee and the stench of blood, shit and bronze with each day's gruesome necessities. It is said that any fighter that slays a dozen others in the grand melee is given her freedom. But in 300 years, only three warriors have ever walked away from the proving grounds. When the closing horn sounded and 13 corpses lay about your feet, you became the fourth to be granted freedom to thunderous applause. This autonomy was short-lived. Within days, word of your accomplishment made its way to the Archon of Justice. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Pit Fighter. Thanks, Bill. Thank you for agreeing with me. Boom. Primary expertise. Um, oh, boy. Great sword. I think he's just a big, burly dude with a goddamn great sword. Um, short bow. I don't want to be ranged. Uh, I'm not a wizard. So it's either sword and shield or great sword. Do you guys, anyone, has anyone played this? Does anyone have a preference? I'm thinking great sword, but. Um, dual wield. Uh, dual wielding. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Um, okay, so plus six dual wield, plus five parry, plus five athletics. Yeah, all right. I'll do. I'll go dual wielding. <laughs> Magic murder hobo. Welcome. Um. Oh, can I? Oh, that's what I start off with. Okay. Okay. So when oh, I get an ability, flurry of blows. Uh, unleash a double attack on your target or slice a carefully placed attack that. Attempts to open a major artery, leaving the target bleeding. Right. Yeah, I heard about this uh, spear and shield thing. Um, all right. So I think a little more precision. I think I'll take slice. Kimbo slice. Uh, I also received training in this combat style. Um... Javelin. Huh. Oh, wait. So can I... You know, alright. What I'll do is I'll go Greatsword for this one. For my primary. Cleave. Uh, sweeping Cone that hits my multiple. Or Sunder. Delivers a powerful overhead attack that reduces the target's armor. Um, I like Cleave. I'll do Cleave. And then... For my secondary, I'll do dual wielding and slice. Cool. All right, now I get to pick my David Banner. Um, it's one of a big sword. It's kind of close. Or like a big, scary skull. That's what I want. What? There's no big scary skull. Um, I'll take that fist. That's cool. Um, red on black fist. Do that. Oh, actually, that's kind of I kind of like that. Yeah, it's a pit fighter. This is the number of uh, victories he had before he was free. Hey, Swirly. 
Thank you. <laughs> I figured this would be a little more of a crowd pleaser for our particular uh, uh, fan base. Um, I want a badass name. I don't want a silly name because it's something I'm going to have to look at. I made the mistake when I played Final Fantasy X of <laughs> giving my main character a very silly name. And I played that game for 80 hours and I kept looking at it and it really kind of ruined the uh, Arthur Curry. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, uh, you know what? I actually have... I should have looked at it before. I actually have a day. That's something I do in my spare time is I make up names. Uh, and I have a database of just cool sounding names that I made up. But I don't, I don't have time to look at it right now because I'm doing the Twitch. I'm doing the Twitch, guys. Kill Death McMurder. That sounds good. Um, Myrmidos, Myrmidon, Myrmidos, Split Skull. There we go. There's a name. I'm not naming him Troy. Myrmidos Split Skull. That's a good name for a uh, former pit fighter, right? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I have to assign. I have eight points available, so I want to go heavy on the might. Um, I, one of the things I did read is that it really... <laughs> I can't, I'd love to put the soft J in there. Um, I, I heard that it's best to specialize. So, um, all right, I'll go 15 on the might. What is finesse? What does that do? Finesse and attribute. Skill and mental precision. Accuracy of attacks and spells. I'll do uh, one point of that. Oh, man. Hey, Arya Orchid. Welcome back. I haven't seen you in a while. Silent Striderm. Hello. Thank you. Magic Murder Hobo. Yeah, I'll, one day I'll um, I'll just put the, put the list up. I mean, most of the names are really stupid. I have sound stupid but um some of them are cool um i love resolve i want to do a point in resolve and vitality seems important right can i go down in this yeah so nine quickness total vitality um uh i'm probably oh. Probably messing this up somehow. Um, that the might is pretty high. I'll 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 take it. Oh, good, you caught up. Are you were you finishing up school? All right, fine, Grimsby. <laughs> Grimsby Split Skull. That's a pretty cool name. All right. All right, skills. All right, two-handed weapons. Um, I have 19 points. All right, let's get a boost up that. Um, athletics, parry, 30. Um, weapons, subterfuge. Uh, let's just pump the rest into that. Okay. Yeah, it was a nice long episode this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so I was I was reading about this. You have the option of doing the conquest start, which is the full start, and kind of play through your background to determine future events in the game, how you got to where you are. Or quick start just auto chooses all those options for you. It's a little bit of a choose your own adventure thing. And I am going to take the full on conquest route. I want to pick all my stuff. So here we go. This is the game.
All the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos' reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late. Hmm. Oh, cool. During the conquest, you will decide your character's actions during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the Tears respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I like this. Oh, wow. That's awesome. The Bastard City. The Bastard City stood on the no northern border between Kairos' empire and the Tears. Built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms, the city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking the city would send a message to the rest of the tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable. This is awesome. It looks kind of like the Hagia Sophia in um, uh, Istanbul. Whoa. Select a token on the map to begin. Gates of Judgment. In the first major engagement of the war, Kairos' armies has crossed the mountains and established a foothold, or both armies send their forces to prepare the way. What is this one? Uh, 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 I'll do this one. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let's move down here. The armies of Kairos took the battle to the gates of judgment, trumpeting the opening call of the conquest of the tears. Two armies brought the distinctive sense of order and chaos to the assault. You went to battle alongside the army whose approach best suited your strengths. Disfavored all the way. Standing shield to shield. Hey, Joe, what did you pick? Tell us what you... Joe is Joe's in the chat. He is also playing this. He's got a head start on me. Tell him everything I do. Tell him what you did. Please. Uh, sending shield to shield with Kairos' ironclad elite, you were advanced to the mercenary army purchased by the nobles of the bastard city. The Legion wanted to send a message to the tears that superior breeding and disciplined training would win the day. Ooh, the bastard city learned too late that a military is earned and never bought. The mercenary army quickly found themselves outclassed by the superior tactics and formation of the disfavored. Yeah, disfavored! Those few who lived to the end of the battle were rounded up, weak executed, and the strong enslaved to hold the army's wagons on the journey south. I know you're a man of order, Joe. You were a lawful neutral guy. <laughs> this is sweet. Um... All right, so feeding the host. You found a way to feed Kairos' armies in enemy territory or to judge the enemy. Just decide the fate of enemy soldiers captured in battle. Um, I think I found a way to feed Kairos' army. Hey, Armel. Uh, feeding the host. Amidst the most optimistic projections, the disfavored and scarlet chorus made short work of the local defenses. They did so well that the armies quickly outpaced their supply caravans. Troops were plentiful, but food was scarce. You only had time to execute one plan to secure provisions. Confiscate merchant caravans or pillage farmlands. How to confiscate the, uh, yeah. You authorized disfavored troops to confiscate food and supplies from traveling merchant caravans. The tears had already spent ignorant centuries glutting themselves outside of Kairos' law. 
After raiding the wagons of unsuspecting caravans and securing days' worth of provisions and supplies, the disfavored found a cache of goods behind a hidden panel. They confiscated potions and elixirs bound for secret contacts within the bastard city. The hall filled the disfavored larder with provisions for the following year and denied the defenders of the bastard city supplies that would be desperately needed in the siege to come. Cool. So, taking the bastard city. The armors of Kairos are master on the bastard city, the first bastion of the tears to fall. Both armies longed to storm the walled outpost. The Scarlet Chorus howling for plunder and the disfavored forming an unbreakable shield wall. Your prowess on the field of battle had carried them this far, but there was one more step to before total victory. Both of the armies had inspired schemes to take the bastard city. Which do you support? Did I support? Um, assault the main gates. Burn the city or sabotage. I think I assault the main gates. We join the disfavored vanguard in a direct assault upon the city gates. No fortification would stand before the unstoppable legion. Awesome. With heroic courage and legendary determination, the disfavored battered the gates of the bastard city to splinters. Those who fell under the consistent hail of arrows or cascades of boiling pitch left the battlefield temporarily only to reappear hours later as Archon Graven Ashes protection healed their numerous wounds. In time, the gates gave way. Kairos' forces spilled inside the city walls with resounding cheers of victory. And thus the city fell by my hand. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Now I have to move this chat thing. The bastard city settled into a new state of normalcy with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. The name was whispered along rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunon? Who's Tunon? Tunon is the adjudicator of the Arcana Summons. Also, oh, that's that guy. Sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Karas's conquest. Either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lathian's Crossing. Lathian's Crossing is built in the shadow of an old wall's junction in the realm of Haven. It's growing trading settlement. The nearby rivers are rich in iron ore and locals like the. Okay. Or as a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Uh, I'm more of a fighter, not a judger. Um, yeah, Apex. The troops of the mountain realm of Apex stood idle in the safety of the valley, biding the time as their neighbors in the bastard tier fell. In the second year of war, a joint force of the disfavored and scarlet chorus crossed over the mountains to take control of the tier's central valley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joe. Okay, there we go. There's the there's the apex. The mountain nation of apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian, stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scarlet chorus had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunon, assigned due to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory as well as keeping an eye on both armies. Hey, Death by Fire 222, welcome. Uh, okay, so the Battle of Edgering Pass, the Archon of Stones assault was perhaps too successful or denial of strength. A new school of mages presented problems and opportunities. Uh, I'm going to do the Battle of Edgery Pass. The disfavored sent their most destructive ally to crush Edgering Fort. Cairn, Archon of Stone. Huh? Oh, wow. He's a giant. Unless that's metaphorical. Uh, bury the stronghold under an avalan avalan avalanche. <laughs> Triggered by the surrounding mountains. The Scarlet Chorus were promised captured enemies for recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. Chorus demanded compensation. Okay, so I side with the disfavored. And the disfavored, those are my boys, man. I am just starting, yes. This is the opening thing. You congratulated the disfavored for taking the pass without risking the lives of Kairos' loyal servants. 
At this stage of the campaign, it was vital to use any advantage that would mitigate LA losses. The Scarlet Chorus claims are insignificant compared to the loss lossless victory. You congratulated the disfavored and encouraged the Scarlet Chorus to better value their soldiers' lives. I suggest that gang bosses took worse than the original offence. Having to remember this, slated army returned to cap to sulk, if not lick their wounds. Boom. Okay. Uh, next, Scarlet Chorus armies were found wearing disfavored armor. Ew, that's not right. The marriage bed armistice, a local custom of the tears, created strife between Karis's armies. Ooh, which one should I pick? I think there might be. Hmm. Oh, actually, Gan Dave, I hate the new house rule too. <laughs> I, there'll be plenty of complaints from me on that house rule over the next uh, few episodes. I feel. Uh, <laughs> um. I guess I, I probably there's people that haven't finished the episode yet, but yeah. Um, all right, so Swords of the Fallen, Mary's Bed. I want to get some sex in here, so we'll do this. The Marriage Bed Armistice. This enemy readied for a peacetime festival as Kairos' forces armed for battle. The disfavored paid no mind to the southern custom and planned to attack the Vendrian forces during, the, during their annual celebration. Scarlet Chorus insisted on a day of nonviolence. Really? As a former tearsman, many could grasp the decency of a temporary reprieve. Um, so I just wanted to march in during the... Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'm cool like that. You offered the locals their last feast, sending a few Scarlet Chorus agents into the mix for good faith. The army hoped that the gesture would foster an air of partnership for the occupation to come. I think that's smart. I've been listening to uh, um, the hardcore Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, talking about the uh, Persian Empire, and that's something that uh, like Darius would do, is kind of foster an air of, uh, and well, for that matter, Alexander the Great. Uh, yeah. Hey! I did something. Festivities went off as expected, and the Scarlet Chorus recruits sent you to enjoy themselves. You sent to enjoy themselves reported little animosity among the revelers. The disfavor protested your ruling as too merciful and waged all-night training drills to combat the sound of deliberation with an anthem, swords, and shields. Hard asses. You sent forces to attack the following day, a, ba a battle from which the disfavored recused themselves out of protest fuck you man ah the fall of apex the defeat of apex and inevitability the armies of kairos met to discuss how to put an end to this stage of the conquest both armies agreed to send an offer of parley along with their acceptance the enemy requested that you appear at the meeting me Word of your fair dealings had apparently spread to their ranks. How did you orchestrate the surrender of the realm of Apex? <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. I haven't heard that one yet. Um, okay. How did I do this? Negotiate surrender or challenge the queen? Um, that sounds interesting, but I don't want to go too much on the Scarlet Jerkoff side, so... Uh, I negotiate a surrender. Whatever. I just... Wait. Okay, well, let's see what this is. Through days of meditation, you negotiated the surrender of the valley to Kairos' forces, putting an end to further bloodshed, or taunting the Queen of Apex into striking you under a banner of truce. You baited the Queen of Apex into a duel and slew her. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I did that. What? Scarlet Chorus urged you to show the Overlord's strength by any means necessary. During peace talks, a well-placed insult goaded the Queen of Apex into striking you. You responded to the slate by challenging her to a duel. Though the Queen was skilled in battle, your field experience outmatched her court training. <laughs> this is sounding more and more like the, the debates this year. As her body lay cooling on the ground, you demanded that her followers kneel before the Overlord's banner. Unable to rise before the fear of the moment, the remaining leaders capitulated, surrendering the valley to Kairos' forces. 
Yeah, evil wins again. Yeah, evil. Oh. I am a benevolent leader when it suits me. All right, I gotta move this again. Pardon me. Uh, the land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kairos' forces. The Scarlet Cor Chorus paused to revel in the victory while the disfavored prepare for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos' armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The disfavored and Scarlet Chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos' military left the choice of your next destination yours to make. Okay, I may choose... Only one of these locations. The Vellum Citadel. Karis's Or Azure. Is this like a kind of pastoral nation? Or Stalwart. This easily defended position of rich military tradition, the realm of Stalwart was the most f formidable realm in the tiers. I like a challenge. Or uh, Grimsby does. So... Actually, you know, I, I kind of want to. That looks like a nice place to hang out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Azure. You're the second person to uh, bring up Clavicus Val, Photon Chief, that I've seen. The nation of Azure, once the richest settlement of the Tears, sat on a verdant, fertile plain. As the disfavored clashed with Azure's defenders, the Scarlet Chorus contended against the region's tribal beastmen, who protected their ancestral lands with incredible fury. Kairos dispatched the Archon Cairn to break the stalemates and force Azure into submission. The colossal man of stone and flesh arrived as instructed, but earning his cooperation was a tall order. Wink, even for you. This is a really cool gameplay thing. Uh, stalked by shadows. Tensions arose when the Scarlet Chorus added a unique ally to their ranks, or the destruction of Azure. Cairn's tactics left the armies tightening their belts. Uh, let's do that one. Destruction of Azure. Cairn, the Archon of Stone, carved a deadly path through Azure, using his powers to blight the land. Scarlet Chorus complained that his tactics left no farmland to feed the growing army. Since Cairn marched with the disfavored, the Scarlet Chorus held the Legion responsible for the destruction of the lost harvests. Um, okay, so dismiss the Scarlet Chorus complaints or order the disfavored to replace the destroyed farmland. I am finding myself really siding with the Scarlet Chorus here, which is a little disturbing to me. Um... Yeah, you know what? Fine. You ordered Cairn's disciples, the disfavored Earthshakers, to use their magic to repair the arable land destroyed by the Archon of Stone. I'm a pretty cool dude so far, I gotta say. At Cairn's rate of destruction, the lands of Azure would soon be unable to sustain crops. But Kairos wanted a conquered land, not a barren wasteland. The Scarlet Chorus voiced these concerns and you backed them, going so far as to enlist disfavored mages for aid. Though loath to pause their studies and focus on agriculture, the mages grad grudgingly assented and traveled with the rear guard, working to heal the land as they went. Yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see. Uh, forced into the fray, the Scarlet Chorus forced the disfavored mages to fight in their battle, or Cairns Mandus, when an Archon turned traitor, who would bring him to justice? Me! The Archon of Stone are almost done. The Archon of Stone refused to rejoin the war camp, loudly denying Kairos' claim over Azure. Nothing less than a full unit of soldiers could subdue the treasonous Archon, yet neither army was willing to risk lives tracking him down. You delivered the order that sent Kairos' forces marching after Cairn. Uh Disfavored. When Cairn brought them victory, the disfavored hailed them as one of the number. Cairn defiled by the will of the Overlord had failed to be disfavored to track him down and get answers. Cairn's Madness. Subduing a wayward Archon was a larger task than rank and file soldiers could manage on their own. 
The disfavoured scouts return to their camp after a long journey, bearing news of irregular rock formations and beastmen chanting Cairn's name. Found neither hide nor hair of the Archon of Stone, but his presence and impact on the Azure Wilderness were evident. Honey spread through the army as Kairos' forces wondered what Cairn's actions could mean. Uh, I don't know if Troy has decided on a game after NHL. I think he's just going to be playing NHL for the next year. Probably. The Edict of Stone. The Archon of Stone made brazen declarations that Kairos had no claim to rule the tears. Soon after, word arrived that Kairos would dispatch this rebellious minion with an edict. What's that edict? The most powerful magic is that of the edict of the magic, then. Commandments cast upon whole regions that can control and destroy man and nature alike. It's cast and either can rain fire with a crops, demoralize city, cities, usher in endless nights, or do whatever it is the kind of submission. No known force, magical or mundane, can stop an edict. Okay. The disfavored took solace in knowing the edict was coming, and the commanders petitioned you to be the bearer of justice. Two non selected you for the honor of proclaiming Kairos' Edict of Stone, a magical spell with the power to destroy the Archon. As he sensed his approaching doom, Cairn began an assault on Plainsgate, the largest human settlement of the area. It fell to you to send Kairos' forces into a suicide mission to halt Cairn's destruction while you completed the proclamation of the Edict. Ugh. Edict of Stone. Send the disfavor to delay Cairn. Scarlet Chorus or... Uh, I'm going to send both. That seems fair. You believed that the only chance of slowing Cairn's assault was to commit to the full force of Kairos' armies against him. It was a desperate gamble. If he were wrong, there would be no one alive to warn the other Archons of a failure. Still, you ordered both Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus forces to march against the Archon of Stone while you read the Overlord's Edict. Oh, the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus alike question the wisdom of this command. You are uncompromising. This approach was the only guarantee to halt the Archon's destruction. The disfavored Phalanx shattered under Cairn's fury, and the Scarlet Chorus mob was reduced to a smear under his foot. The city of Plainsgate suffered little damage at all as the armies kept Cairn occupied, a small beacon of hope among the devastation. As you read the Edict of Stone, the earth under the battlefield groaned open, spitting up outcroppings of rock that obliterated the surrounding landscape for miles. When the land heaved open to take Cairn, the Archon allowed it with serene acceptance. I did used to live in Tokyo, Jesh Ball. Hello, Jesh Ball. <laughs> Magic Murder that sounds awesome. I, that's a good idea. Oh, there goes the city. Falling under the boot heel of Kairos the Great. The lands blighted and unrecognizable, the realm of Azure was left utterly ruined by the events of the war. In times to come, the tears would call this blasted region the Stone Sea, for the treacherous rock formations and persistent quakes became mm -hmm. the defining features of this once, this once, this once wouldn't land. It's not me, that's them. Scarlet Chorus established a sprawling camp in the shattered, rocky terrain. They quickly absorbed these those dis displaced by the upheaval of the land. These hapless refugees were put to work as slaves and soldiers, and the chorus slowly built themselves a makeshift fortress in the blighted, quake-ridden realm. Your tour of duty in the broken lands of Azure was complete. You didn't have long to rest before Tunon called you into service once more. Mm. Oh, bye, Bill. I have reached the end of Kairos' conquest. Do you want to re continue or erase your progress to start over? I want to erase the whole thing. I started from the No, let's continue. Northern Irish. I could try Northern Irish. I've got a friend who's a Northern uh, Irish person. Person. I haven't seen him in years, but uh, I have to work on that one. The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. Okay. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, 
Those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising. Murdering oh. the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. Ew. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's well to crush the resistance. But months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. Hmm. The Overlord is not amused. Nor and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. <laughs> Kairos backs this threat with an edict. Ooh. A magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. What an honor. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes mm -hmm. into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. Cool. You are trapped in Vendrian's well, Ew, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's edict in any way that you can. Oh, cool. Awesome. Whoa, look at that. Oh, yes, hello. Aurora, is it? Kairos the Overlord be praised. When I heard the avalanche, I feared the valley was sealed with you on the other side. His favorite warrior claps her gauntlet to her breastplate, the traditional salute of her legion. Oh. Um, characters, attributes, skills, history, and gender. This is made the contest all up in the sun. Blah, blah. Yeah, okay, I figured that. Uh, each character speak with a display banner, made their portrait. These banners indicate which faction the character is allied with. Okay, so she's disfavored. Uh, these banners. Uh, okay. Often see the names of important characters, locations, and gold text color. I've seen that already. Done. Okay. So, alright, so they are neutral towards me. Right? I have gained favor with the disfavored. I'm honored to welcome you back to Edgering Pass. Soldiers have not... I don't know why she talks like that. Soldiers have not forgotten how to, how you protected the integrity of our squad. Nor have the locals forgotten your self-defense killing of Queen Alanta. Yeah, man. That's what I... They've taken to calling you Lucky Pile of Dung. What? Oh, Queen's... Oh. <laughs> Queen Slayer they've taken to calling you Lucky Pile of Dung. I've seen how many of these South Nobs and still have no nickname. She shakes her head, holding back a chuckle. <laughs> A shame we cannot offer you a more festive welcome. Such things will have to wait until we deal with this insurrection. Uh, glare silent. Okay. Ooh, this is. I love. This is so. Baldur's Gate. I just. I love this. This is. A, I'm hearing another message. The Archons. Um, I'm gonna glare silently since she called me a pile of dung. <laughs> cool. I'm asking questions beyond my station. She dips low, trembling as she bows. Forgiveness, please. This That's cool how her portrait changes in the thing here. That's neat. Well, you've traveled a long way. I won't keep you further. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you at... Her voice falls silent, her attention snapping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? <laughs> don't. <laughs> I don't want to be called a lucky pilot dog. More runners, third time this week. The Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from outside the valley. She points over to the collapsed path by which you arrived. But they're a bit late, too late for that now. Come, let's show these Oathbreakers a good fight. Oathbreakers. The honor of the Vendrian Guard reneging on the surrender of 429. Soldiers in both the Disfavored and Scarlet, Scarlet Chorus now refer to these Tearsmen as Oathbreakers. It is perhaps one of the few points of agreement between the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus. Well, everybody hates uh, traitors. Good night, Windblad. Thank you for joining. Alright, what is this? Oh, shit! Alright, 
I'm pretty familiar with the combat style of these games. Uh, the fists are fighting on arms, special abilities. And, uh, all of your character's abilities and spells can be accessed by selecting the category icon at the bottom of the selected frame. Talent spells, combo abilities, artifact abilities, reputation abilities, and stances. Category I icons for weapon sets and quick items follow. To use an ability, left click on the ability icon. Target, you can click on the party members to target on that. Target ability. Heroes in the game. Friend and foe have five primary defenses against attacks. Parry, dodge, endurance, will, and magic. These defenses are based on the character's attributes, equipped items, and other effects. The character's accuracy is based on their skill with the type of weapon they're wielding. Accuracy is compared to the... Uh, there are four possible results from any attack. Hit, critical hit, graze, and miss. Critical hit increases your damage while graze reduces it. Each attack you gain experience in the weapon skill used to make the attack. Even a miss will grant some experience. Cool. Okay, so... I'm... Yeah, I'm just gonna charge at him with my... Freaking! Oh wait. Will do. The thrust. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um. Oh, I'm gonna do a slice. How about a slice on you? Slice. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Right. Will do. What's this? <laughs> Ooh, man, he's just going after Aurora. Come on, man. All right, let's do the thrust again. Ooh, damn. Oh, yeah, you're down for the count, bruh. Right. Will do. Oh, okay, what's up here? Oh, shit. I have 30 athletics. Oh, I do. Hey! <laughs> awesome. Okay, so... Let, ooh, let's run up and do a cleave. Oh, I can't. I gotta get up there first. Alright. Let's do a thrust. Will do. Not actually again, babe. Alright, now... To a cleave down here. Yeah, there we go. Do it. Cool. That was fun. Uh, now do a slice on him. On it. Cool. Yep. Just keep after him. Ooh. Wow, 32 points of damage. Oh. Yeah, now he's dead. Alright. I'd love to say. Ooh, 22. That was a critical hit, I think. Oh, let me, uh. Take her down, man. Take out the... Yeah, I killed the Amazon! Uh, do they have stuff? Yes, they do. Oh, cool. Uh, Vendran Guard, Heavy Bronze Armor. Broken Armor. Some soldiers, Javelin. I want to go as well. Take them all. Don't bother with me. Go down the, to the pass. Drastus, the soldier, clutches his gut and winces. You can see a hint of entrails between his fingers. You're wounded, and it's not trivial. Uh, uh, yeah. I care about my soldiers. Uh, that fourth ability, I'm not sure. I checked it, but I don't remember. He laughs through clenched teeth. This tis but a scratch. Seen twice as worse, ten times over. He doubles over in pain, gagging and shivering. If you let me help. Set him fine, the soldier moans and shakes his head. Graven Ash protects. Okay, that's the main dude. You go on and help the others. 
That conversation is over. All right, I actually have to uh, call this one. Um, say that here. Uh, I gotta walk the dogs and get ready to go to an appointment. But uh, this this is great so far. I'm loving it. Um, uh, hope you guys uh, uh, can join me tomorrow. I'll be doing this again tomorrow afternoon. I'll get a bit of an earlier start, probably about one o'clock my time, uh, and I'll play for several hours at that point. So thanks, guys. I'm super excited uh, to embark on this journey with all of you. You guys are great. Uh, those of you who have uh, listened to the episode, I hope you enjoyed it. Those of you who are yet to uh, listen to it, please listen to it so we can discuss it freely in the Twitch comment section uh, or the Twitch chat. Thanks, thanks guys. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow.